The International Philanthropic Organization, INMED, Partnerships for Children and their local affiliate, INMED South Africa, will, in partnership with local industrial gas products and chemicals manufacturer, Air Products South Africa, launch the country's first aquaponics system designed specifically for smallholder farmers and for training youth on August the 28th. The new system is being finalized at the Carol DeVette Technical High School in Thunderbell Park to discuss the benefits that this system and aquaponics in general has to offer rural communities. I have InMed President and CEO, Dr. Linda Pfeiffer. Dr. Linda, good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning, thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Tell us about the aquaponics farming system. What does it exactly entail and why do you believe that this is a sustainable system in as far as poverty alleviation? Well, aquaponics is something that we're very excited about as an organization. Um, it's a combination of um, fish cultivation and hydroponic vegetable production in a closed system, a circulating system. So it uses oh, approximately 85 to 90 percent less water than traditional agriculture, and it's very intensive. So you can produce approximately 10 times as much in the same space as traditional agriculture. And it's all natural because it's the nutrient-rich water from the fish that waters and fertilizes the plants. And the plants are actually grown in gravel, and the water filters through the gravel, and the gravel collects the nutrients for the plants and then cleans and aerates the water, which then is returned cleaned and with oxygen to the fish tank. And how expensive is the system to set up and uh, to, to, to keep? Is it sustainable? Well, first of all, I want to emphasize that we in Med did not in invent aquaponics. It's something that's been around. But what we have been developing over about the past 10 years is a simplified, low-cost version. Um, and a modular version. So it's something that you can start small, you can add on to it, but we use all locally available materials. So here in South Africa, we source everything locally within the communities where we're working. Um, and you can start at any size and, and grow. But what's really important is that we work with the farmers and the youth to develop a business plan so that they're not only um, starting this now, but they can expand it in the future. And we provide um, the training, the support, um, you know, the initial financial inputs with partners like, like Air Products to implement the beginning systems. But with the training and the business plan, um, this empowers the participants then to go to the development bank. There, there are a number of grants and loans available to farmers and if they can demonstrate that it's something that works and they have a viable business plan. So all those things are very important. I guess the initial benefit is, of course, you will be sourcing out the infrastructure from the local community in Thunderbell Park. But what are the other benefits for the local community? Community. Well, first of all, um, we are implementing it there at a technical high school. So on the one hand, they will be generating revenue from the fish and the produce that they are for, for the school and for the, for the learners. Um, and then also the local community has the benefit of the fresh fish and the, and the local produce. Um, but at the same time, we're training the next generation of farmers. And that's something that here in South Africa, but also really around the world, youth have become very disillusioned in farming. And you don't find very many youth that want to be farmers anymore because they see their parents have worked very hard and not don't have much to show for it. But this is, it's, it's a little bit of technology, so it's a little more exciting. And it's not like a hoe, you know, in the hot sun all day long. It's um, not physically as difficult. So youth get very excited about it. And that that is one of the most rewarding parts of this. Now let's talk about the implementation of it. Like you're saying, it's new technology, very mm -hmm. challenging, very exciting. What do you find as a challenge in implementing the system, particularly in rural South Africa? Well, the challenge everywhere, especially when you're introducing something new, is changing behavior, you know, culture change. So as, as I indicated earlier, we really developed a simplified system. So it really is not very difficult, but it is new and it is different. So the training is very important. And um, especially if they already know traditional farming techniques, um, it's sort of human nature to kind of not believe that you really can plant things that close together or that you really 
you know, have to feed the fish three times a day or, you know, it's just, it's different. So the training and, but also the, the constant support and monitoring for a period of time so that you can really demonstrate that it works. Now for Inmate South Africa, what plans do you have for the other parts of the country in as far as your projects are concerned? Well, with this, um, this is a sort of a medium sized commercial unit that we're implementing at Vanderbilt Park. And we're very grateful to um, Air Products for taking this step because it's really the first one here in South Africa. But since since then, since we started this, um, we've been able to launch additional ones um, uh, up in the Venda region of Limpopo and in Free State in uh, the Monyaking uh, township around Vesselbron. Um, and we're also implementing this with disabled farmers um, because one of the beauties I, I had indicated that it, it does not require hard physical labor, but also we build them at sort of, you know, way height and whether you're in a wheelchair or you're standing it's it's not not difficult physical work. Dr. Linda we appreciate your time thank you very much for joining us. Thank you us. so much it was a pleasure.